Hey guys, it's Shuin, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make some proper dub techno and style basic channel. As usual, you can get the project file and samples, a MIDI and presets, and all that stuff from this video in the description. And if you're a patron or a Patreon, check there because it's already available and has been since last night. And yeah, let's get started. So, this will be here in the intro. We're at 118 BPM, a little bit slower, more chilled out vibes. And the first sound we have here is dub chords, which sound like this. So here are the notes for this. You can see it's just playing this A minor chord the whole way through. Pretty standard stuff with this. You know, usually you want to do minor chord. In this case, it's A. But let me show you what this sounds like without the delay. So yeah, I'm going to talk more about the delay once we get to it. But I just want to give you an idea for like what you want to program and... Obviously how different that can be sometimes from what the end result is going to be. So, for the sound on this one, I made it using analog. What this is, is it's very simple. It's just a saw wave going into a low pass filter. The low pass has an envelope on it, and that's how we're getting that, like, pluck. And then it's also got a bit of an LFO on there, just kind of moving it slowly. And then to give it even more movement, I've got this frequency of the filter being automated here. So, oh, you can hear that. That's kind of more gradual. So we're giving this tons of movement. It's got three different things that are modulating this filter frequency. And it's even got more with this band pass over here. But yeah, with these kinds of sounds, like because it's so simple, the thing that I realized when I was breaking these kind of tracks down is it's just all about layering movement together. Like if you can layer movement by having multiple different things in your sound or even in the track with multiple layers that are moving around and changing and just constantly evolving and never sounding the same twice that's the key here so yeah and then i have the amp envelope set like this just simple pluck and then the last thing here is just a bit of vibrato after that i have this auto filter this is doing a band pass and i've got the lfo on there here's without this and then with it so you can hear without it, it still sounds pretty cool. It definitely still has a lot of movement. But this is just that last little thing that's kind of like changing the sound a lot over the course of the track. What's happening is the band pass filter, as you know, it's a combination of a low pass and a high pass. So it's like taking this and making it really deep and then really bright. And it's just constantly moving around like that. If I turn the, um, the LFO amount up, You can kind of hear it even more. So yeah, it's just kind of taking this sound and giving it even more movement. Like, again, it's like stacking the movement and having things that maybe you wouldn't even be able to tell if you were listening to this or moving. Like, to be honest with you, if I was listening to this, I'd probably just think, you know, it's just a low-pass filter with an envelope on it being automated. But you can see there's a little bit more to it with stuff like this. After that, I have a bit of drum buzz. This just fattens the sound up, kind of makes it more percussive, I'll say. Like, if I turn this off, And then on, you can hear it just makes it hit a bit harder. After that, we have a bit of chorus, kind of spreads the sound out and makes it a bit bigger. And then the next thing we have here are these two filter delays. So the filter delays, like I was saying at the beginning, are very important for the sound. The way that this, this kind of thing works is you put in some MIDI like this. And give it a lot of filter movement with the low pass and the band pass. And then when you put on these delays, what happens is you get this like crazy kind of cascading movement as you can hear. Because what's happening is these different points on the filter sweep are being replayed over top of the other points that is playing at like just in the synth, if that makes any sense. And it's like you get these cool cascading sounds where it's like... You know, you're just hearing a lot of sound from one synth. And then that's just with one filter delay. Then we bring the second one on. You can hear that cascading delays effect gets even crazier. So the key with this one is just all the different settings. This is why I like using filter delay is because it allows you to really get a detailed sound. I feel like filter delay should really be renamed dub techno delay, to be honest with you. But yeah, so you can see like I've got these set at just completely different times and they're just playing off of each other. 
Yeah, it's it's cool. Like I like doing stuff like having this one playing on the five setting, which I believe is down in corner notes, and then this one playing on the six setting. It's like yeah, just st small stuff like that where like you're hearing all this adding up on the sound, and you're not hearing any one particular thing. You're just hearing it all, and it sounds really cool. The other thing with the filter delay is the filters. It's very useful to be able to filter the delays. I definitely recommend playing around with that. You can see I don't have any of these at the same setting, even if they're at similar places. They're still slightly different, and that's just because, you know, you want it to have, like, a broad range with the delays. You don't want them all to just be sounding exactly the same as the dry sound. But yeah, so after that, we have a bit of reverb. Here's without this. And then with the ticket, it's pretty important for the dubby sound. The key with this one is just getting a short reverb because we have so much space being added from the filter delays that you don't need like a super long reverb to get that effect. You just kind of make it shorter and tighter like this. And it gives you that space. And then the last thing we have on here is just a bit of drum bus. You can see got that set like this. This just helps to kind of tie it all together. It brings out the delay and the reverb makes them a bit stronger. And then the last thing we have here is an EQ8 cutting out the lawn. That is it for the dub chords. The next sound we have here is the bass, which sounds like this. So it's a pretty simple bass line like you would hear in a lot of dub techno. You know, it's not usually the craziest stuff going on. It's usually just something kind of simple and sparse like this where you can hear like... There's a lot of space between the notes with this one, so you're still getting that bass in the mix of the track. But it's just very spaced out and minimal. That's what you want. You don't want it to be doing too much because, like, these chords are already doing so much, especially with this particular style of dub techno. You know, it's just something kind of simple there in the background, adding a bit more low into the track so with this one it's just playing one note a like i said we're in a minor yeah you can see it plays this do do and then just one note the second time you know pretty simple stuff just kind of mixing it up making it a bit more interesting but the sound on this one it's made using operator it's a pretty simple fm sound you can see we just have two sine waves here at the same octave i've got them detuned slightly and then i'm just bringing in the second one a little bit so here's without that and then with it you can hear it just gives a little bit more texture to the sound and makes it a little bit fatter. After that, we just have a bit of drum bus fattening the sound up. And then the last thing I have on there is a compressor. We're just side chaining into the kick just because there's that one note that plays at the same time as the kick. And if I turn this off, you can hear. They're kind of fighting for the space there. But this compressor is not doing a whole lot of side chaining. I mean, you can hear it and you can see it as well. It's not doing the strongest side chain, it's just kind of like, you know, making sure that that note stays underneath the kick. So yeah, the next sound that we have here is this 808 kick, which sounds like this. So this is a pretty simple sound, it's just like a punchy 808 kick. With this one, it's definitely more about the type of sound you choose, so like I said, it's an 808 kick, it's definitely what you want, maybe like an 808, maybe a 909 if you can make it work. But you just want this like deep, thumpy, kind of softer kick like this. It still hits hard, and it's still sitting in the right place in the mix. Where it's not like, like really, really hitting like other styles of techno, but you still feel that underneath everything, like in the right place. And that's really just about the type of sound you choose. And then just using some effects to kind of bring it out. I've got this drum bus here. Here's without this. You can hear the kick does have that little like kind of like smaller thump quality to it, but it doesn't really sit right without the drum bus. The drum bus just makes it sit perfectly underneath the chords and the bass. So yeah, that is it for the kick. The next sound that we have here is this hi-hat, which sounds like this. This one's pretty simple, you know, with this style, you just want like a nice sort of shorter hi-hat like this. Nothing super, super long. Or in your face, it's just kind of, you know, simple and minimal. Like the other sounds here. With this one, I took this hi-hat sample. 
And then you can see what I've done is I've just got this fade in a little. So it's kind of like going into it as opposed to just like a straight hit. The only effect they have on there is just a bit of saturator. Here's without this. And then with it, so you can hear it, it's subtle, but it's just like with the 808 kick, even if it's like a smaller sound like this, you still need to do something to bring it out in the mix and give it that kind of nice, that nice space in the mix. Another thing too is like with basic channel sound and dub techno in general, it's very heavily based on analog gear. When you use analog gear, you get analog warmth. And when you use a computer, you don't necessarily always get the analog warmth. So sometimes you need to add saturation like this just to kind of give it a more warm and kind of textured sound and make it not just sound like a dry sound inside of a computer. After that, we have this click, which sounds like this. So what this is, is it's just meant to be a bit of background percussion. You know, it kind of just adds a little bit of something cooler in the background. Without having it, you know, just be like... If you can hear, when we don't have this, it just feels like it's a little flat. It's kind of missing something. It just needs something more in the percussion. And that's what this is. It's meant to just be a little bit of extra percussion like this without, like, completely taking over the mix. So for this one, it's, you can see here the notes just playing 16th notes. And what it is, is it's the sound I made using operators. So what we got here is I've got two sine waves just doing some FM. So I've got those detuned a little bit. And I've got the second one pitched up a ton. So that's how you get the click. And then I have those going into a band pass filter. Here's without that. And then with it, you can hear the band pass just kind of focuses in on that click and gets rid of that little kind of like tone that's on there, although that would work too, honestly. Uh, but then we also have this LFO here on the filter. So that's just moving it slightly. You can see we also have an envelope on the filter. But again, it's all about just having things that are constantly moving and not like perfect movement as well. You can see this is this rate here is set to 44.35. So it's not on like a particular setting where it's like eighth notes or quarter notes or anything like that. It's just kind of, you know, free moving like that. So then I have a little bit of echo on there. Here's without that. And then with you can hear, it just gives it that little like clicky kind of ambient echo without having it be too much. Again, we don't want the sound to get in the way of anything else. After that, we have a bit of auto pan. Here's without that. So this just really helps to bring the sound out because everything else is very much down the center. But you have this sound, which is bouncing from ear to ear. And yeah, it just kind of makes it a bit more interesting, you know, gives it a bit more space. After that, we just have a bit of drum bus. This really helps to take it from just sounding like a synth to more like a percussion. And then the last thing we have on here is an auto filter just cutting out the line. And that is it for the click. The next thing that we have here is this first noise, which sounds like this. So what this is, is it's just like some background noise. I notice this in a lot of dub techno, especially in basic channel tracks, they'll use something like this. It just kind of adds some more atmosphere, texture to the track, it makes it feel a little bit more interesting. Here's without it. And then with it, like it just adds something. Almost like very ethereal to the mix, if that makes any sense. But yeah, so for the sound on this one, it's made using operator. It's really simple. It's just white noise going into a bandpass filter. And then I've got an LFO on the bandpass. That's how you get that movement. Again, we're stacking up movement here. Then I've just got a bit of chorus to kind of spread it out, give it some dimension. Then we have a saturator, which is fattening it up and making it a bit stronger and more powerful in the mix. And here without that versus with it, it's also giving it a bit of texture. And then we just have a compressor side chaining it to the kick a little bit. Not a whole lot, but just a little to keep it kind of under control. And then I have this auto filter cutting out the low end because sometimes the saturator can add a little bit of unwanted low end. And then the last sound that we have here is just this vinyl noise, which sounds like this. This one's really simple. It's just a vinyl noise sample. You know, not really got any effects on there. 
Just kind of place it over top of that other one. I feel like this kind of brings this noise to life. It's like when you hear this, it could be a synth. But when you hear that vinyl crackle over top of it, it sounds a lot more like some kind of atmosphere or some kind of cool, like, textured sound like that as opposed to just, like, white noise coming out of the synth. So that's the purpose of this vinyl noise. It just adds more texture to the track. And yeah, so that is going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said, in the beginning, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets and all of that stuff in this video in the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. Thank you so much, guys, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.